there. Thank you so much for joining us today. We have a wonderful panel. We've got Susan Jarbo, Linda Baker, and Kathy Richmond. And Kathy Richmond has a wonderful topic. This is going to be so much fun. But before that, please join us as we open in prayer. We invite you to sit back, take a breath with us, and turn within. Father, Mother, God, Great Spirit, Divine Wisdom, we turn within knowing that you are always here, always connecting us to everything that is. God, in this connection, we see growth, peace, love, understanding, and joy. Help us to express all these things and everything you would bring more of into the world. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. And thank you. Okay, Kathy, what have you got? All right. I am really excited to be sharing this. This is an old book. I've had it for a long time. It's written by Louise Hay and Robert Holden. It's Life Loves You, Seven Spiritual Practices to Heal Your Life. And I was just perusing through my books the other day, and I thought, well, I want to take a look at this one. And I want to share the, the chapter on looking in the mirror. And it's the miracle of self-love. It says, in my room, I have a mirror. And I call it my magic mirror. Inside this mirror is my very best friend. And that was written by Louise Hay. She said, mirror work isn't easy for me. It wasn't easy in the beginning. Louise tells a room full of students at my five-day seminar called Coaching Happiness. The most difficult words for me to say were, I love you, Louise. I shed a lot of tears and it took a lot of practice. I had to breathe through my resistance each time I said, I love you to myself, but I stuck with it. And I'm glad I did because mere work has transformed my life. There are 150 people at the seminar and they're hanging on Louise's every word. Among the students, as many psychologists, therapists, and coaches who use mere work both personally and professionally. Louise attended the seminar as a student for her own learning. However, when we came to the module on mirror work, I couldn't pass up the opportunity to ask Louise to talk to us. Fortunately, she did. She was happy to do so. Louise tells us about an early breakthrough she had with mirror work. One day, I decided to try a little exercise, she said. I looked in the mirror and said to myself, I am beautiful and everybody loves me. Of course, I didn't believe it at first, but I was patient with myself and it soon felt easier. Then for the rest of the day, I said to myself, wherever I went, I am beautiful and everybody loves me. This put a smile on my face. It was amazing how many people reacted to me. Everyone was so kind. That day I experienced a miracle, a miracle of self-love. Louise is on a roll. And so I take this opportunity to ask her about the purpose of mirror work. Our conversation was recorded. Here's what she said. The real purpose of mirror work is to stop judging yourself and see who you really are. When you stick at mirror work, you get to see beautiful you in full awareness without judging, criticizing, or comparing. You get to say, hi, kid, I'm with you today. And you become a true friend to yourself. Louise agrees to answer questions from the group. The first question is about common mistakes people make doing mere work or not doing mere work is the biggest mistake, Louise says. Too many people don't do mere work because they think it won't work before they've even tried it. Once people start, they're often put off by the self-judging that they witness. She says, the flaws you see are not the truth of your being, Louise says. When you judge, you see flaws. When you love, you see your essence. The next question is about common blocks to doing mere work. Mere work doesn't work in theory. It only works in practice, Louise says. In other words, the key to mere work is to do it and to be consistent. 
When Louise is, is asked if she still has days when she finds it difficult to look in the mirror, she says, yes. And on those days, I make sure I stay in front of that mirror until I feel better. She doesn't go out the front door until she feels in a more loving space, she tells us. After all, the mirror, the world mirrors how we feel about ourselves. Louise and I wrap up our session together with one more question. This time I ask her, what has been the greatest gift of doing mirror work? She says how mirror work taught her to love herself and how, to how it accelerated her healing process when she had vaginal cancer nearly 40 years ago. Love is the miracle cure, she says. And when you're willing to love yourself more, every area of your life works out better. On that note, Louise takes her leave, signing off in familiar fashion. Remember, life loves you, she says. And I looked over uh, to a very some a variation of some of the the things that she would say in the mirror and i'm just going to list five i am open to life loving me today i allow life to love me today i say yes to life loving me today i am grateful for life loving me life loves me and i feel blessed those are five and if you just took one of those and you did it 10 times every day that's that's exactly what she's talking about. So I started doing it and I got to remind myself because she said the biggest mistake is when you don't do it. So I'm curious if you, you other ladies are familiar with mirror work and what do you think about this? Well, I can definitely speak to this. This is a technique that we used in residential treatment for people who were healing I uh, addictions. There's a, so much self-loathing, self-hatred, regret that comes along with that. We had people, and I've probably got a highlighter next to me, actually write affirmations on the mirror in the bathroom in a highlighter. Uh, it, it's easy to wipe off and it stays right there and the colors are really, really bright. And the idea was that you look yourself in the eye and you say something positive. And it, it was the hardest thing for so many people to do, um, and including me. When I first started trying to do it long, long ago, it was, uh, it was very, very difficult. And it was very, very difficult for me to... Um, trust other people because I didn't trust myself and for me to build a relationship with the divine because I didn't feel like I was worthy and all these things were helped by looking myself in the eye and saying yes yes to life yes I am worthy yes life loves me and and it's even to this day, when I'm brushing my teeth or washing my face, I'm looking straight in the eye and saying positive affirmations to myself because I'm important too. Thank you for bringing this Thank you. topic. Thank you. Linda? Thank you, Kathy. I enjoyed that. I have to tell you, I've got a little bit of a different take on it, though rather than me standing in front of the mirror and looking at myself, I'm look, I look in the face of my friends, the people that I'm talking to, and I feel like I can see myself in their face based on what the look on their face is like. And I hope that that doesn't take me away uh, from the message uh, that most people get when they actually look in the mirror and see themselves. What do you think? Well, we'd have to ask Louise Hay. <laughs> she's, she's the master of this. So I, 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 would, I think we'd have to defer to, to her. Well, and I have an idea on that as well, Linda. Um, try, 
try mirror work and look in your own eyes and see, is it different? Is it the same? Um, and then you tell us, try both ways. Okay, that's a good idea. Uh, originally, <clears throat> when I first thought of ever doing any kind of mirror work, I was just a, a kid and my brother is three years older than me. And uh, he, I remember he was in high school and he was on the debate team and had, had uh, different uh, uh, school functions. And he stood in the mirror in front of himself all the time. And being being younger, I thought, well, he's nuts. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, he would stand there and he'd talk to himself and he'd go through debates. And, and that inspired me somewhat. <laughs> so I will. I'll, I'll go in and I'll try both. All right. How about you, Susan? Well, last fall, I was in uh, a book study with with Unity people. Uh, and I think Louise Hay was one of the authors of the book. And there were various exercises and activities for us to engage in. And one was to put stickers in various places in our homes. And then when we saw the stickers, we would make some sort of positive affirmation. And uh, Pastor Robert bought us little heart stickers. And so we each had a page of little heart stickers. And I see one right now <laughs> on the corner of my monitor. And the idea was you put them in places where you're going to see them. So I have one at eye height as I go out my front door. I have another one on my closet door. And uh, you're inspiring me to get back to this because I have I haven't taken down the stickers, but I haven't uh, really followed through on on this activity. I am one who thinks it. It's really hard to say, uh, I love me. And, and so I have a question for the panel. Why is that? Is it because we didn't see anybody saying, I love me when we were growing up? Why is it awkward? Um, I can... I can definitely jump in with some ideas for those of us who are particularly women of a certain age. Many of us were raised knowing that our lot in life was to take care of other people. And if we made them happy, they would make us happy. And it's kind of inborn codependence that looking at yourself and saying, I love you, we know all the horrible things about ourselves. And that's why it's so incredibly healing to know everything that we've ever done, ever thought, ever said, and to be able to see the Christ within us and love ourselves for an expression of God on earth for who we are today regardless of who we've been before, is one of the most healing things we can go through, not just mentally, but physically as well. Just like Kathy was saying, loving ourselves invigorates ourselves. It makes us feel younger. It makes us feel more content in the world. We build up confidence. It negates fear looking yourself in the eye and saying, I love you. Even if I can't fully mean it right now, the more I do it, the closer I come to making it my truth. And that's one of the most important things. It might be easier to look yourself in the eye and say, God loves you and so do I. And that might be a gentler way. Of course, you know, the divine lives within you, but you're making eye contact and you're telling every cell in your body and your highest and best spiritual self that, yes, 
you are love and you are worthy of love and you love you. All right. Does anybody else have anything else they want to say or can we conclude this? Okay. Well, I just wanted to thank Linda for the suggestion of adding God loves you to it. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I like that idea. Yes, that is. That's beautiful. So for us on the panel and our listening audience, wouldn't that be a nice challenge that for this week, that every day we go to the mirror and we make a mission, God loves me, whatever it is we choose 10 times and see how you feel. But according to Louise Hay, it's life changing. So I'm committed to it. I'm glad I could share this with you. I'm, we are so blessed to have this time together, time that we can share and share with our listening audience. So I thank you. I thank you, God for bringing us together, for allowing us to have this time. And I wish you all the best in your mirror work. Now, if anybody watching has any suggestions, has any thoughts they'd like to add, we would love to be on the receiving end of that. If you think you'd like, you've got a book and you're really inspired, boy, you'd like to share something, let us know. We'd love to have you join our panel. It's uh, it's actually it, you bring whatever topic is in on your heart and you share it. So we would offer that to you. And with that, we say God bless and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you for joining us and let's stay connected and grow in spirit. We are on Facebook. Search for Unity Church of El Cajon and follow us and like our posts. You can reach us on YouTube at Unity Church of El Cajon. Please subscribe to our channel, watch our videos, and leave comments, which can help us improve. We are on the web at unityofelcajon.org. Email or call our church office to receive our weekly newsletters which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together.